Back when I bought my Uller, I remember saying to myself, why in the world hasn't somebody put together one device that does all of these various things that I want it to do? I'm wearing straps here and straps there and aura rings here and whoop straps there. And then I have to have something else to cool my mattress in addition to a comfortable mattress. Why didn't somebody just do all of them? Guys, I'm here to tell you, Eight Sleep has done it. Stick around, I'm gonna tell you exactly what this device does and why it is a must, must, must have in your biohacking Rolodex. What's up guys, welcome back to the show. Make sure you guys like this video, hit subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave me a comment below because guess what? I am gonna do a video comparing the infamous Uller, which I've, that's one of my most popular videos I've ever done on this channel was my Uller video against the Eight Sleep and how they stack up. Now, little side note here, this is, I am sponsored by Eight Sleep and there's a reason for it. I've done a million different videos like this, performance related stuff, and there's not one that I believed in more than this one in order for me to put my name associated with it. Even the Uller video, I'm not sponsored by Uller. I just did it because it was a great, at the time, I felt to be it was a great device. Eight Sleep, I fell in love with it. I fell in love with the device. I fell in love with what they're doing as a company. I love their mission. It aligns with who I am and what I'm doing with my brand. And so I went out on a limb and said, yeah, hey, you know, I, I believe in what you guys are doing and I wanna be a part of what you're doing. So I am sponsored by Eight Sleep. But let's go ahead and talk about why this device is a must have if you want to accomplish peak performance as a business owner, and if you want to function optimal output and not leave anything on the table and feel like you're tired dragging all the time, this is the device you must add immediately. Okay, and can we talk about, just to get this part out of the way, can we talk about why the fact that no one's come up with anything but a white mattress up until now? I love the fact that Eight Sleep went so far as to thinking, hey, it probably makes more sense to not show stains on a mattress to not do a white mattress. Kind of makes a lot of sense. So I love that aesthetically speaking. This thing is beautiful. It looks amazing. I love it. I would literally leave it there without any sheets on my bed at all because it looks that good and it's gonna be the same situation. So let's first talk about what it looks like when everything shows up. And then we're gonna go into the setup. We're talking about the science. We'll talk about the app. We're gonna get into all of it and then I'll give you some pro tips at the end. Okay, so the first is getting this set up. So this is not dissimilar to maybe some experiences you've had before uh, where you have the mattress show up and it's vac pressed, you know, in the bag and you cut it open and then it starts expanding and it takes about five to 10 minutes before you can actually lay on it. Very, very similar. You're gonna get three boxes. That's the first one. The second box is gonna be the tower. So it's gonna be where you put the water in. It's gonna be what pumps and kind of powers the whole unit to cool your bed or cool your pod as Eight Sleep calls it to the new temperature that you want it to. And then the third is the actual topper that goes on top of your mattress, right? Or your pod that keeps things cool to wherever temperature you want it to be. Now, something that I wanna talk about that's really, really, really important here is you just get a really good sense about the way this thing was constructed, the way that it's packed. I always say this, but the way that everybody else did their cooling units for beds, it's like they kind of had the theory of it and then Eight Sleep came and perfected it, right? Like Eight Sleep is like, okay, I'm gonna like hold my beer. I'm gonna go do it better. That's literally what Eight Sleep has done. You can tell through and through throughout the entire process when you look at the nuance, when you look at the details from both the physical part of it to the app, to the science, everything. They've just really thought of all the, they've crossed their T's and they've dotted their I's and you will consistently find that to be the case throughout. Okay, so something really important as you're getting everything set up and you put it on your bed, you, you swap out your old mattress, as you're getting things set up, one of the things you're gonna realize that wasn't abundantly clear with some of the other devices that I've tried is the instructions are very clear, right? So you're not gonna find out in six months you were doing something wrong, like using distilled water or putting hydrogen peroxide in the actual water so that it doesn't start having build up inside and you have to have it replaced. One of the things I experienced that I saw many times in the comments from my Uller video uh, was that people had to exchange it out multiple times, both the unit it and also the mattress topper. They've had it replaced multiple times. Support was a big headache. Just a litany of issues that they experienced. One of the things you'll find is that with Eight Sleep, you both have the, the written manual, but also you have the app. You scan a little QR code. It's gonna take you through the entire process. It's very, very clear. It gives you little pings and dings and notifications of when things are working, allows you to test things, connects to your Wi-Fi. I mean, it's a very thorough, but also seamless process that is gonna be easy. If you're, even if you're brand new to devices like this, you literally cannot screw it up. So that's a huge plus. Okay, and then something else, and this really goes into, you know, kind of tying the details together like I talked about, but some of the other units where you put your topper, the cooling topper on top of your mattress, they're just on there with these little flimsy straps. And so what you'll find sometimes is that you move around or you kind of swipe your arm and it flops out and it's just kind of all over the place. One thing that I love about how Eight Sleep did theirs is actually it's a zipper unit all the way around. So it, it's part of the actual mattress when you have it all put together. When you put your pod together, 
it's part of it. Why that wasn't thought of by some of the other manufacturers in this space, again, it just shows you why 8sleep went above and beyond to make sure they really thought about everything. They really covered all of their bases when it comes to the details, the nuance of putting this thing together. That's a huge one. The last thing you want is to have this thing just kind of hang in there and it just looks kind of cheap. So this is great because it actually it goes up, sits on top, fastens over, you know, like a like a you know, a fitted sheet or something, and then you zip it around and boom, it's on there. So next, as you'll notice that both the hosing unit and that kind of as you're putting things together, the biggest takeaway that you're gonna have as you're kind of messing with these components is it just feels really sturdy. It feels really durable. It feels like it's made with high quality products. That wasn't the case. That wasn't the experience that I had with some of the other devices, uh, specifically with the Uller. It just, it kind of felt flimsy. It kind of felt like it was gonna break. It kind of felt like I better be careful with this or it's not gonna last for the long haul. You're not gonna have have that experience whatsoever with the eight sleep. The other thing you'll notice is once you put that on and you zip it on and you lay on top of it, the first ex the first experience that I had with others like the Uller was I could feel the cooling mechanism inside of the topper. I could feel the little tubes that flush the water through it. That's not at all how I felt with the eight sleep. It just felt like it was part of the mattress. It didn't take away from the comfort of the mattress. In other instances, you kind of had to compromise the comfort of the mattress for the benefit of the cooling system. That is not the experience you'll have with this. In fact, you won't even notice hardly that it's even there. Uh, at first, you will kind of feel what I believe to be. There's a little strip that goes across around the your chest line. I think that's where the biometrics are. I'm gonna talk a little about that later, uh, but I think that's that. But after a few days, you won't even feel that anymore. It's just gonna be like laying on a normal mattress, which is huge when it comes to biometrics because sometimes you have to do sacrifice a little bit of comfort for the both the biometrics, but also for the cooling. Okay, so let's talk about the, the science and why I found this to be high, high performing in relation to some of the other devices that I've tried. The biggest thing is gonna be this. When you turn on your age sleep, you're gonna feel the cooling instantly. Some of the others that I've tried, one of the ex experiences that I've had is it kind of takes a long time or I have to program it to start at eight o'clock so that it's ready by 1030. Or you're kind of feeling around the, the top of the mattress like, is it working? I, like, I can't really tell. You will know immediately when you turn on the eight sleep, you will feel it. It's almost, it's gonna be like you turn on air conditioning in your car. You almost feel it instantaneously. You don't have that, that delayed response that you have with some of those other devices and it's not loud. So one of the other issues that I saw that a lot of people complained about with the Uller was just a really loud device. This is extremely quiet. In fact, it's almost so quiet that it took us a little bit of time to get adjusted to it because we were used to the hum of the Uller and now we had to get used to silence. Now, the reason that's important, the reason that's good that you actually experience that coolness right out of the gates is because from a scientific perspective, it's better that you are entering and lowering your body temperature early because it's gonna help you enter into deep sleep faster. So just from a purely like sleep performance standpoint, the most effective deep sleep hours that you have are almost within about 30 to 60 minutes by the time you go to sleep. So you should be entering into deep sleep fairly quickly. The problem is, is that many people go to bed hot because they're up, they're doing things, they're active, they take a hot shower, they lay down. It takes a while to lower their body temperature and thus they don't fully maximize the opportunity to tap into deep sleep. Those are really prime hours. It actually helps you reset a lot of your uh, endocrine system and things of that nature in those first few hours of sleep. So really, really important hours there. At least that's a really small window of time where you have to capitalize on that. So if you bought a cooling system that you don't notice until you wake up at three in the morning shivering, it really doesn't accomplish much of what you wanted to accomplish. Some people, what they'll do is since they don't feel it early when they're going to sleep, they set it really, really low. And then by the time at four o'clock rolls around, now they're cold because they just couldn't send. You're not gonna have that experience. It's gonna help you enter into deep sleep faster, which is much, much better than the alternative. Okay, so let's talk about some of the data. I mentioned I, I wear a lot of biometric devices and it's all to gather data points. I love that this is, we have feedback to validate, is this actually working? Is what I'm doing, is this temperature actually working? So a couple of different things that are really, really powerful that you only get from like more of the higher end devices, like a BioStrap or an Aura Ring is probably more familiar with, uh, is HRV. So HRV is a huge number that you need to know. It's the closest uh, metric that we have to gauging stress on the body. So you wanna have that, it'll actually give you a range as far as where you should be, it'll tell you where you are, and it'll kinda give you a, an idea of, you know, hey, you might be doing some things that are impacting uh, your your actual recovery because your HRV score is low. So the general rule is you want your HRV score, it seems kind of counterintuitive, you want it to be higher, not lower. Lower means you have higher stress in the body. I know it's kind of an inverse relationship, but you want it to be higher. Now, one of the things that I noticed when I didn't use the cooling or I changed the temperature or I put the Uller on top or whatever the case may be, because I've played around with a lot of different variations just to test this data, is that it did have a direct impact on my HRV score. So 
huge to know that. Maybe it doesn't have a lot of impact on you. It's just something to keep an eye on if you find that you're chronically not recovering or kind of feeling sluggish is to look at that HRV score. And then the other thing you want to look at that's of utmost importance is the actual sleep performance data. So at the top, you're going to get an overall sleep performance score. It's very similar to BioStrava to Aura, where it'll give you, you know, a scale of zero to 100 of how well did you actually recover. So really, really important. It's taking a lot of factors into consideration there. Most, uh, most specifically, uh, your actual stages of sleep. So whether you're REM or you're deep or light sleep or what have you. So there's percentages that you want to hit that are going to tie into your overall sleep performance. It's going to tell you you really slept well last night you're fully recovered. That's really kind of like I tell people, it's like driving around and not looking at the actual gauges on your car. You don't know how much gas you have left. You don't know how much you have in the tank to push. And so some people keep pushing themselves despite the fact they're not recovering and they wonder why they're exhausted. So this is going to allow you to know what day should I push? What day should I pull back? What day should I be gentle with myself? What day should I really be aggressive? This is going to give you kind of permission to do that. And one of the benefits that I did was I really tested this data, right? Because I'm a huge nerd when it comes to data sets. So I tested tested all these different devices with the eight sleep with their metrics. The reason I wanted to do that is because this is directly touching my skin. These devices that I wear directly touch my skin. Same with the oil ring, same with the whoop strap, same with the bio strap. They all touch your skin with red light. I was concerned that you wouldn't be able to get as, as accurate insights from something going through a bed sheet and through the materials of the pod as you would with touching the skin. And what I found is actually quite the opposite. It was very, very accurate. And more importantly, how I felt aligned with what the data reflected. So if my performance score was really low, I felt it. I actually felt like I didn't recover as well as what I thought I should have uh, and vice versa. So if I got a really high performance score, I could actually feel anecdotally that I did feel better. Now, some people might say it's placebo, but I did have multiple data sets from different devices to validate that it was indeed pretty accurate. You're shooting for roughly about 10 to 15% of deep sleep, 20 to 25% of REM. You may hear some variances in accordance with that. You might hear 25 to 30% REM or 15 to 20% deep. Somewhere in that general ballpark is where you want to be. And you'll be able to pull those data sets very, very seamlessly without all of the addition of all these other devices, which from a cost standpoint, in terms of having to acquire all these other devices, in addition to a cooling unit, it kind of any kind of cost comparison you're doing with other devices like BedJet or Uller immediately factor that in because you might be paying 200 extra dollars for an eight sleep, but you also have to spend $600 on devices like I have or more. Other things that they do is they'll tell you the amount of time it took you to fall asleep from the time you got in bed, how long you got out of bed when you woke up. So it gives you all these various aspects that are kind of ideal or optimal ranges that they're giving you in addition to the actual sleep stages, HRV and sleep performance. So a lot of different data sets for you to consider that all have an impact on your overall sleep performance. All right. So I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about the app because this app is uh, really amazing. There's one thing in particular that comes to mind that I think is a really powerful add-on that again, I wondered before, why didn't somebody else do this? And 8sleep has gone ahead and thought about the details and included this. But I use things like uh, Calm, uh, amazing apps that you can use to listen to meditation music, even sometimes I have to go to YouTube and find different, you know, binaural tracks and what have you to listen to, to help me kind of enter into deep sleep or into a more effective sleep state. They've gone ahead and done that. So 8sleep has been tremendous in pulling in some of those resources, meditation, nature sounds, sleep stories, things of that nature. They've already added that, which I think is a huge value add that you are getting for free. Whereas in other cases, you'd have to pay a monthly subscription to access resources like that. And then as far as navigating the app, it's pretty seamless, pretty seamless process. One thing that's a huge bonus that other platforms like this or other devices like this don't provide is it actually gives you the status of your device, of your tower. So uh, in some situations, you have to remember member or set an alarm or reminder to go tend to it, to filter out the water, to replace the water, to add hydrogen peroxide or add whatever, you know, cleaning solution they provide. You have to remember to do that. Uh, in this particular situation, what's great is that the app will actually nudge you and tell you, hey, your water's low or hey, this needs to be primed or whatever the case may be. I also love it. They have a light so you can add if you want to get up in the middle of the night and you want to stub your toe, there's actually the ability to turn on a light on the tower so that it kind of illuminates the area so you can get up and seamlessly kind of do whatever you need to do, turn it off when you need to. Uh, sometimes it actually even noticed, I think this is what it's doing, but when I get up and I wake up in the morning and I sit up, it comes on automatically. So it like knows that I'm getting out of bed, which is a really, really cool thing 
that it does. So you can set the different times throughout the night with whatever temperature that you want. You can set that. You can also even set it to where when you wake up, it both vibrates and warms up. So it's more of a natural rise versus having the alarm blare in your ear and you're kind of like in a cardiac arrest waking up in the morning because you're getting screamed at by somebody. That's not an effective way nor a natural way to wake up. So I find it to be very effective that it does a slight rumble, kind of like a vibration uh, and also heats up so you wake up naturally. Okay, so let's talk about uh, a few of the things that uh, being a little nitpicky here, things that maybe I would have done differently or like to see change going forward. Uh, the first is as you're looking at the app, since we're talking about the app right now, I liked one thing with some of the other platforms, you could actually set a specific temperature, right? So for sleep performance uh, purposes, you kind of want to be between, and this varies, but like 64 to 68 degrees Fahrenheit is where you want to be. I liked it the other ones that you could actually set those specific temperatures. As you notice here with the app on the H sleep, it's a little bit different. They have their own kind of measurement process of like negative one, negative two, up to like negative eight or negative 10. I don't know what that means. And there's not even like a subset of the data that tells me it's this temperature, like negative two equates to 68 degrees. I don't know what that is. It does optimally tell you most people like you sleep best at X percentage. So it does have some smart features to kind of identify what temperatures would be best for you. And you can also change it in intervals. So the, the temperature you go to sleep could change based on the temperature after you've been asleep for a few hours that changes at three o'clock that changes at the time that you wake up. So you can modify each one of those. It's just on their own scale. And I don't really understand it to the full entirety of I that, that I, I haven't been able to figure out and I played around with it a lot. I would personally like to see just general specific temperature numbers because that way I know as a sleep hacker, I know exactly what temperature I'm at and it could help. But overall, I'm being nitpicky. It's, it's still effective. I love that the data is there to validate what temperatures I'm sleeping well, what performance I'm getting in relation to what the data is telling me. I think that having that all under one roof is a massive benefit. I'm just being a little bit nitpicky when it comes to that specifically. Okay, and then next, and this is with any new mattress, and this probably would be different if you just got the topper and not the full pod with the mattress from eight sleep. Uh, but anytime you get a new mattress, regardless of what it is, you're going to have that breaking in period. Uh, one of the things that we found was that it's a little firmer than what my partner, my, my wife and business partner would prefer. I personally prefer a harder surface. So a lot of people would assume why wouldn't you get a sleep number bed? Because that way you can change it in accordance with your own preferences. The problem is, is that I don't get the, the data. I don't get the cooling mechanism that's so powerful that you get with something like eight sleep. So you just kind of have to compromise and say what's most important to you. What we've done on an interim basis while we're breaking it in is get a really thick kind of fluffy topper that we've put on top of the mattress for the time being. It's been about two months. I've taken it off temporarily to see if it's kind of softened. It has a little bit, but not to the point that we're gonna sleep without it. We had the exact same issue with our puffy mattress and now it's amazing and you can sleep without the topper, but it took several months. So the question people would have is, is well, aren't you losing the cooling? Aren't you losing the data when you have this big thick topper? And the answer is yes, I am losing that for the time being. And so many people might say, well, why would you invest in that? For me, uh, it's worth it to invest in that couple months to break it in and then have the full capacity of it versus having my wife sleep in another room because she can't stand how firm it is or it can't get comfortable uh, versus not having a couple months or having a couple months rather of having to make that compromise so that it's best for both of us long term. So just take that into consideration. It is considered medium firmness, so it's not crazy firm, but it's also not crazy soft. Contingent upon what you prefer. Uh, I did reach out and talk to 8sleep and they told me there's a specific topper they recommend. I'll include that Amazon link in the description below. I personally found it to be no thicker than like a bed sheet. I mean, it really doesn't do much of anything, but it will. It did not affect at all the cooling. Slightly maybe did not affect the data at all from what I could gather, but it is something that is uh, obviously an extra layer is going to prevent cooling to come through to the full capacity that it could. Other than that, I think you are good to go. I think you're gonna love this device specifically. I think you're gonna love how quickly and how effectively it works. I think you're gonna appreciate all of the diligence that 8sleep has put into this in addition to all of the robust offerings that they have. So there's supplements that they recommend from Thorn, which is a highly, highly, highly reputable brand. Uh, there's just a lot that they're doing and as well as further advancements in terms of really taking a disruptive stance on sleep performance and optimization. It's always good to find brands that are constantly pushing the envelope, pushing themselves forward. And I 100% believe that 8sleep 
is that type of company. All right, but I think that's all you guys need to know for now on the eight sleep, but stick around. Make sure you guys like and subscribe because I am gonna do a breakdown, side-by-side -side comparison, getting really into the granular aspects of what's better, the Uller or the eight sleep, and in what ways is it better? Is it worth the extra couple hundred dollars to go with the eight sleep over the Uller? What made me flip the script and go from Uller to a staunch supporter of eight sleep? So make sure you guys subscribe to catch that video. Don't forget to check the link below to learn more about the eight sleep and all of the resources I recommend to go with your eight sleep before you make a purchasing decision. Like, subscribe. I will see you guys in the next one.